Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, thanks for joining me today as we try to get this channel launched and off the ground. Um, I'm glad you're with me. Um, as you can probably tell by the video I posted last, um, we're actually at in Gulf Shores, Alabama right now. Um, and we had a really good day of fishing in that last video, but today, um, the last couple days I've tried to get a video, it has been extremely windy. Um, the surf has been chopping. It's been actually a double red flag for the last couple days. Um, I've attempted a couple times to go out and fish, but um, I can't even keep my weight on the ground or in the sand, um, as well as the seaweed has picked up over the last couple days. So if you can barely hear me, I'm actually under the carport here at the house that we're staying at, um, hoping to get away from some of that wind. And for today's video, I just wanted to give you a quick look at what I take to the beach with me when I go um, surf fishing. Um, I don't do it all the time. I'm only down here about once or twice a year, um, but I do enjoy it when I get down here. And so I just wanted to give you a glimpse of the, my fishing cart um, and kind of what goes on my cart and what goes to the beach with me um, each and every time I go to the beach. That way um, you have an idea of kind of what you might want to, as you start building your own um, surf fishing setup, you'll have an idea of kind of what you might need to look at putting in your fishing setup. So with that being said, um, I'm gonna jump in and show you a few things that I put on my cart and then show you how I can pile it all together um, so I can make one trip to the beach and have pretty much anything and everything that I need in that cart with me as we go. So hang on, we'll get started. Um, I hope you guys enjoy the video. All right, you guys, so here's a look at the, my fishing cart that I have. It's nothing fancy. I think it was $100 online that I got. And so this is the fishing cart that I use each and every day when I go to the beach. Um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, um, but the tires work well enough being plastic tires. Um, nothing super fancy, just something to get your stuff to the beach um, in one trip. Over here, is, uh, you can see a pile of things that we'll go through in just a second, but most of that is going to end up on this cart. Um, and that's a lot of the stuff that I take with me, minus a couple fishing poles, to the beach each and every time that I go. So. The cart set up, it has your handle. I put a pool noodle here, just an old pool, no pool noodle. Um, it allows me to put uh, fishing hooks if I'm tying lures or tying um, pompano rigs. It allows me to actually um, stick these hooks in here. That way they're not floating around all over the place. Um, I've been stuck by a couple in the past. So this year I added that on just so that it keeps those hooks out of the way um, so that you don't get stuck when you're trying to find things in your tackle box. Um, my cart here, as you can tell, I've actually put in a uh, tape measure along the side here. Um, it goes from zero all the way down to roughly 30 inches, um, which measures the majority of the fish that I catch. But if not, I do have a tape measure in my bag over here um, that goes longer than that. Um, you'll get a glimpse of that here in a second when we go to the tackle box. But that helps a lot for quick measurements um, along the cart pretty easy to hold the fish up to it so that you can kind of get an idea of how long it is make sure it's legal to keep um, on this cart I do have six rod holders um, four up front sorry I have seven but I normally only carry four to six poles with me um, I've got four rod holders and then in the back I normally will carry my sand flea rake um, for scooping sand fleas on the beach um, but that's kind of how the fishing cart in general is set up and then we're going to look at um, some of the things that go on individually and then we'll look at how um, I actually put them together on the cart so that it makes it for an easy drag. All right, so getting to my two main surfing surf rod setups, I have here a two pin, a pin fierce two, and a pin pin pursuit three. Um, both 5,000 size reels are my main um, pompano setups that I run. Um, they are on, let's see, HO Express um, 10 foot rods. Um, so these are the two setups that I run with 10 foot rods that allow me to get out behind the bar super easy um, and allows me to kind of target those pompanos specifically. But these two poles normally will run in the front two pockets of my uh, fishing cart. Um, that way the two longest rods are up front. That way if you do run into something tall, um, you're going to hit your tallest rods first. That way you know that they won't fit. Um, but normally I'll put those up front because those are my two main rods that I use um, here in the surf. All right, so second, um, this is my smaller rod. Uh, it is a Pin Fierce 2, um, 3,000 size reel. Um, and I believe this is a seven foot, I know you can't see that, seven foot extra fast action rod. This is actually a combo, um, the Pin Fierce 2 graphite rod. Um, but it's a great little combo that I picked up. Um, I use it a lot now for um, either whiting fishing or throwing lures in the surf. Uh, 
it's got a really nice action on the uh, rod but with a 3000 size reel you pretty much have enough drag to pull in um, whatever fish you may be catching in the surf but it's a great small action rod I also use it a lot of times when I'm fishing um, off the pier um, just things a smaller rod that doesn't uh, get in the way whereas those 10 foot rods might be a little too much if you're not on the surf um, or if you're fishing close up not extremely far out in the surf this is a great option um, it just allows you to throw those lures and the smaller pompano rigs even for whiting um, closer to the shore without having to deal with those big massive 10 foot rods um, then my last one is probably the cheapest option that I have here on the cart with me today and that is a tiny Zebco slingshot. Um, honestly, it is a Walmart rod um, that I bought for probably no more than 15 or 20 bucks. Um, it is extremely light. I think I only have like 10 pound tests on here, but to be honest, it makes whiting fishing um, extremely fun um, on this really light setup. Um, I just run it with a Carolina rig most of the time with uh, down to a size six. Uh, size 6 circle hook. Um, this is the, one of the ones you saw me fishing with in the last video for the whiting. Um, even those little bitty whiting tend to feel like monsters on this little pole. So if you're just getting out there with your kids or something to that effect just to have some fun pulling in a whiting um, on this pole is extremely nice. My wife has actually pulled in a 22 inch redfish on this thing. Um, let's just say it was bent over pretty significantly but it still got it in off the uh, out of the surf so you can catch a ton of different things with this and it makes it a lot of fun especially for little ones that are out there in the surf messing around and wanting to pull in some fish this one's a great little setup i wouldn't recommend using it for anything huge but obviously we've pulled in a 21 inch redfish with this uh, setup so i mean it is capable of doing it because a lot of times when you are fishing for those whiting up close sometimes you will run into the occasional redfish um, that will take your bait so it will make it work um, it might be a little harder work reeling it in with this one compared to one of our other setups that we have on the cart, but um, it will work um, and it actually is a really fun setup to have on the beach with you just for those smaller fish fishing up close um, that you might not want to use your huge set setup for. Um, it's fun to have on the cart. I don't always take it with me, but when I do, I pretty much always have fun with it, um, either myself or my wife or some one of the other people that are running with us. Um, we do enjoy that pull. So those are the setup for for the three fishing rod setups that I have that go with me each and every time that I am on the beach. Um, now we're going to get to some of the smaller things that go on this cart with me that are not fishing poles. Alright, the next thing I take with me to the beach for sure is a cooler. Um, a cooler is one of the most important things you can have on the beach. Um, whether you're keeping, you're keeping your uh, shrimp or your bait cool in that cooler or whether you're just ready for that pompano or redfish or fish you're going to pull in off the beach um, you want to be prepared to keep that fish ice down the best way you can to take care of that fish while you're on the beach um, taking care of your fish is one of the best ways to keep preserve it and keep it fresh and make it taste the best when you clean it and eat it later on in the kitchen um, so this is my cooler that i run on with my cart i have it it's just an igloo cooler um, i forget exactly how big it is but it fits in my cart well um, you can tell it's nasty. I've been fishing out on the surf this afternoon. Um, I also have a Cabela's tape measure on here. It runs from one inch to about 22 inches. Sometimes this is easier to use um, than the one that's on my cart just because the cooler is actually sitting on top of it, kind of in my cart. So the top of my cooler is always accessible. So at that point I can measure up to 22 inches over here um, with this ruler on top. So I have a couple different ruler options. Just makes it easy to make sure you have the fish measured to make sure it's legal to keep. Um, I obviously use the top of my cooler here for cutting bait, cutting shrimp, um, that kind of thing. Um, while we're on the surf, it just makes it easy. Um, that way the top of your cooler is nasty. You can spray it off with a hose when you get done. Um, wipe it down and you're good to go. But a cooler is another really important thing that I make sure I have with me on the beach. That way um, I can carry a bag of ice, I can carry bait, I can carry that sort of thing with me and not have to just carry it in a bag. But that will fit directly on my cart. Um, be easy to drag around with me. Last one, the next thing I have here is going to be my tackle box. My tackle box is obviously something that has to go with me when I go to the beach. Um, and here in a second, we're going to actually look at what's in this tackle box to give you a glimpse of kind of how I organize my tackle box when I'm going to the surf. All right, so next we have my tackle box. Obviously, I have an ugly stick bag. Um, it is one of my favorite bags that I have had. I've had a couple different setups 
in the past, but this has been one of my most enjoyable bags to organize. Um, it clips, has two clips here that clip down, but it also zips, as you can see, it zips around so that you can keep that sand out of it, even though it's almost impossible to keep the sand out of it completely when you're on the beach, especially when the wind's whipping really bad. Um, so it opens up here, and it has a side pocket here that I keep my light fishing line in, stuff for like smaller uh, pompano rigs and that kind of thing goes in this pocket over here. This pocket on the right, I keep a lot of my floats. Um, I have a couple different floats that I use for um, when it's really calm out, as well as some redfish rigs that have some big pop, big popper corks on them that I keep in this side over here, just to keep them out of the way because they're not something that I use each and every day when I'm on the surf. Um, Second, we have the front pocket here that unzips, and as you can probably see, we have a lot of our different utensils here. Um, I have a knife, I have scissors for cutting fish bites, um, pliers for unhooking the fish. I also have some fish grippers for the sea trout and stuff like that that have some toothy critters on them. So I carry most of my utensils that I'm gonna need when I'm on the beach readily available in the front of this uh, tackle box and I, what I'll actually do is as I start using them especially my pliers and my scissors when I get to the beach I'll take them out of the front pocket and I will actually run them in my one of my rod holders to make them readily available when we're in the surf um, or on the beach because most of my poles are going to be out in rod holders at that point so I can make it available easy to grab when you have a fish on the line or need to cut some bait um, they're readily available there but that's where I normally store them once I get to the beach. But on the way to the beach and back from the beach, a lot of times they will run here in the front of this pocket, readily available um, in case you need them on a moment's notice. So that's the front pocket. Then we have all of our different containers in here that I run. To be honest, these three, I don't necessarily use a ton. Um, I actually just organized before I came down on this trip. I got some shiny um, bait kind of lures there stuff that might be usable in the surf but then this one is the one that I really use a lot when it's calm out I keep all my top waters um, top waters my diamond jig stuff for Spanish um, anything that might like those shiny little lures um, I keep it this box that way I can pull it out and have it ready to go um, if I feel like I'm gonna run some top water in the morning especially um, but the things that I use the most are actually these two containers right here. I have this container and this container. And to be honest, these two are the ones that I use the most. Um, and in a second, we're going to actually take a look at what's in this box and what's in this one and why I use these so much when I'm on the surf. So this box right here is one of the most versatile boxes that I use on the beach each and every time that I go. Um, and that's because this is my pompano rig box. Um, pompano rigs are one of the biggest things that I use when I'm on the beach because I'm either targeting pompano or redfish. Um, some people call them double drop rigs or single drop rigs um, is another name for them. But they are one of the rigs that I use most often on the beach. And I have this box set up so that basically with this box, with some line and the, the other box that actually has my weights in it. Um, I can, this is, I have everything that I need to tie a pompano rig and get it out in the water as quickly as possible. So the way, this is just a um, plyo tackle box. It actually has five different sections in it. Um, then you can subdivide it into 10 different sections if you want to. Um, and so what I did was on this side, um, you can actually see, I've got it set up to where I have my snap swivels here. They are set up, these are what I use for my weights at the end of my pompano rigs. I have my regular swivels to connect it to my line on my pole here. Um, and then I have some different size floats, yep, like a yellow and a couple orange floats, some beads, and then a yellow and highlighter green float here. Um, just a couple different options. I like to run floats on my pompano rigs. That way uh, it kind of helps get those baits up out of the water column, in the water column a little bit. Um, so on that side I have all my floats and my snap swivels and my regular swivels. And then you flip it to the other side um, and you actually open it up. And I'm not sure how well you can see this, but I actually have my hooks set up here. So I have them set up from size two, size one, um, one aught, two aught, and then I have some six aughts and some size sixes over here that I can use either for cut bait or for whiting fishing. Um, but it has me, it gives me red, red, a lot of availability to my hooks 
and to my snap swivels and everything that I need. So with this alone right here, I can have a Pompano rig ready to go in probably five or 10 minutes. Um, and then all I would have to do is tie it to my line and then put a weight on the end and it's ready to rock. So this has been absolutely phenomenal to have in my bag. It's something you can easily drop in and pull out um, and have ready to go in a matter of a minute. But it just has everything you need for a Pompano rig right here in one very tight um, knit box. So yeah, this is my one of my absolute new favorite boxes that I have in my tackle box. All right, you guys, now I'm going to show you how I compile all of this into my cart to make it one easy trip down to the beach. Um, that way we're not lugging it back and forth trying to make multiple trips to the beach. So to start with, I have my cart. And so the first thing I'm going to do is grab my tackle box here and it is going to go directly in the front of my cart. It just fits nice and snug in there. Um, sometimes I'll put it in second but a lot of times it's hard to get it in with the cooler already in there. So second, we're going to put our cooler in here. So we're going to grab the cooler. It fits nice and snug right there with my tackle box and it's not going to go anywhere. Um, gives you ample room to keep things nice and chilled while you're on the beach um, as well as a cutting place for bait, that kind of thing. Next, what I'll do is I'll actually run two poles here. I'll have my two 10 foot poles like I told you earlier there. Um, for example's sake, I'm going to run this small one up here, um, and you'll see why in just a second. But normally I'll run my two 10-foot poles and then my two smaller poles in the back. Um, then I'm going to run up here, and I'm going to grab my rod holders. Um, these are tall pieces of PVC, about a 45-degree cut on the bottom, just so they're easier to hammer into the ground when you get to the beach. But I'll run them along the side of my cooler and in, in between my two fishing poles um, on either side. Um, like I said, most of the time I'll have two poles here, so I will run two poles on that side as well um, with probably another two rod holders on that side, um, but it allows you to get those rod holders on the cart and to the beach in an easy manner. So it'll look something like this um, on both sides. I normally run three or four rod holders depending on how many poles I'm gonna put out. So that is an easy way to get those to the beach. Um, the only thing is sometimes you have to watch about them sliding off a little bit, but most of the time um, it's pretty easy to get those to the beach without losing them. Then I have my sand flea right here, um, and it goes in my back rod holder right here. So you can see it goes there, and it just kind of swings on the back side. Um, so it is easy, kind of out of the way, it doesn't hit my poles. Um, as we're kind of rocking and rolling down to the beach. Um, but it's a great tool to have, don't want to leave without it. Um, but it rides in the back there, that way it doesn't mess up any of my poles. And then last but not least, we have, I have a hand rag and my water bottle. I have my water bottle just hanging right here on the side. I keep fresh water in that so that if a reel falls in the water um, or hits the sand, gives me something to wash it off with before I start um, fishing with it again. That way that sand doesn't get all up inside the reel and it's a little easier to clean when we get back home. And last but not least, my hand rag on the way to the beach, it just hangs out right there. And then when I'm baiting up that kind of thing, it gets hooked on to my side. So I have something um, besides my swimsuit to wipe my hands on. And so that right there, you guys, is how my fishing cart gets set up uh, for the beach each and every time. And the only other thing that's not here, like I said, is a couple poles um, because underneath this carport they want it, my 10 foot poles won't actually fit in the cart. Um, but besides that, I will carry a chair in one hand um, and pull the cart with the other. Um, and it allows me to get to the beach um, in one fatal swoop. Um, that way I have everything on the cart that I need. Um, and then you're already fishing instead of having to take multiple trips back and forth uh, to the car or to the condo, wherever you may be staying. So. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Um, like I said, it's just a glimpse into what my fishing cart uh, looks like. There are so many different ways that you can set it up. This is just how I've chosen to set mine up and it works great for me. So play around with it. Um, I hope you guys have found this information useful um, as you guys either start compiling your own fishing setup um, or just figuring out what are some of the things you might need to take to the surf with you when you go to fish. So hope you guys have a good day guys. See you in the next video.